Hey, what's up, Lawn Care Nuts? Good morning and happy Saturday. I'm like sweating already. Listen, so today's primary function is to check out the results that we got from our glyphosate treatment, which was exactly 14 days ago right now. The product that I have says it's active within 10 to 13 days, so this is pretty much it. We've gotta check and see what kind of results we got and see if we're gonna need a retouch. The other thing we're gonna do is go ahead and fill in some of the holes where the trees were. I know you guys think I forgot about that, but I didn't. Right now, there's just a bunch of wood chips in there. We need to go ahead and remedy that because you're not gonna be able to grow grass very well on top of wood chip. Even St. Augustine that'll creep across just about anything, including cement pavers, it still doesn't do that well trying to creep through a bunch of wood chips. So we need to go ahead and give it a boost and give it a leg up and get things right before we put these plugs into this lawn. All right, so here we go. So you can see there is some green left in there. I'll get some close-ups if you can't tell, but there is definitely some green right in through here and through here, look at that. Quite a bit right in there as well. A little bit there. Now this is different. This is probably something that I just didn't get a good spray on in here. That over there is something different that I'll show you in just a minute. Now this green over here I left on purpose. This is some thriving St. Augustine. So I went ahead and tried to leave a little of it in here just to give us a leg up, you can see. But I missed this area here. I got a little too careful. So we're gonna need to spray again in here. And now I'm gonna show you something that you guys have never seen. I'm actually getting dominated right now. It's gonna be a short-lived domination, but I've gotta put up with it. All right, so let's go ahead and take a closer look at some of these areas that actually didn't die off. So just so you know, I kinda knew this would happen. This salad bar is just so thick with garbage that I knew that one application wasn't gonna do it. So. I kind of planned for this and that's why I'm doing my plugs next weekend. This is just too much overgrowth of crap. Especially when you see the main pest that's still alive in this lawn, you'll see why I knew I was probably going to need to do a touch up. So what you see here, this is nuts edge. So there really isn't too much I can do about the nuts edge getting through. I mean, it's just a thicker, woodier plant, you know, it's just gonna need an extra application. So I'm gonna go ahead and get that done today as early as possible. So I look at the label and this product has a seven day replant window. In other words, you can plant seven days later. Today's Saturday, I wanna plant next Saturday. So I need to go ahead and get my glyphosate down early in the morning now so that I'm a full, you know, seven days past when I actually go to plant later in the morning next weekend. So that's gonna be a good portion of my day is respraying the glyphosate here. I got a glove up and everything. But before I do that, I'm I'm gonna go ahead and do some maintenance here on the lawn just a little bit. You can see I've got a little bit of remaining stump back there that I've still gotta take out. I'm gonna do that this morning and then again, I'm gonna fill in those holes and I'll show you how I do that. Okay, so the key with filling in holes in a lawn that you're getting ready to redo, or really any lawn for that matter, the key is to match the soil as close as you can. In other words, whatever the surrounding soil is everywhere else, when you fill your hole in, you wanna fill that hole in with as close to the same kind of soil as possible. Now, if you can get it and source it from somewhere else on your property, that would be ideal. But in this case, I don't. I don't have any surplus soil laying around, so I'm gonna have to create my own. I am gonna grab some from the surrounding areas and pull it in as best as possible, especially just to make sure everything is level. But as a rule, I'm gonna have to try to match it. So the first thing I need to do is take a look at the soil that I have in my lawn existing. I've got this nice, powdery, sandy soil. Pretty much we'd expect here in Florida, but it's not white like at the beach, so you can tell that there is some organic matter here, albeit not a lot. So if I'm gonna fill in low spots, it's best to try to match the soil composition that I have. So I went to Home Depot and I bought myself just plain old leveling sand, as well as a little bit of topsoil, and I mixed those two together, one part topsoil to two parts sand. And what this does is it helps me to mimic what I think the surrounding soil is like. Now the other thing that you're gonna do is tamp this down real well because some settling may occur. 
And then finally, the top two to three inches of soil that you use to fill in, take this from somewhere else on site. We do wanna go ahead and get the native soil as the actual topsoil over top of the areas that we filled in. You're always gonna have some risk of bringing in weed seeds, but I've got so many weed seeds in this lawn right now, I can't make it any worse. Some of you will remember Ringer that I used way back in my applications that I did at the church a couple years ago in Crown Point. I've always liked Ringer and I went ahead and reached out to them and they went ahead and sent me some. So I'm just introducing it here. And the reason I like it here is because I'm gonna get some potassium and I'm gonna get some nitrogen. So I'm just kind of feeding the soil here. As you guys know, organics feed the soil. There's what's called the soil food web, which we'll be talking a lot more about here in the future. And that's what organics do. They build the soil. And that's really what we care about here. And that's why I'm using Ringer right now. Okay, so the first one's done and I'm already sweating, but that's part of what I love about this. Good exercise. I've got one, two, three. So now I've got three more to go. I'm gonna go ahead and get those done and then we'll move on to the next step. All right, lawn care nuts, here we go. Round two, let's make this one count, huh? So not really a lot here. We're gonna use our same good techniques at filling. We're gonna wear our proper protective equipment, which in this case is rubber boots, rubber gloves, long pants, long sleeves, and eye protection. And I'm using this HDX brand glyphosate here. This is Home Depot's brand. It's a 41% glyphosate product. Works just as good as the eraser that I had in the last video. Other than that, I'm just gonna walk a grid, look at anything green, and anything green that I find is gonna get coated good with this 41% glyphosate. I'm gonna be as careful as I can to not spray any more than I have to, but I need to make sure that I coat everything, especially that tough to kill nuts edge. All right guys, so that's it for this part. I've got everything done that I can do today. I've got site prep just about ready. Everything's leveled out. All the holes are filled in properly. And I went ahead and did my last spot spray of glyphosate. Now I'm gonna wait the seven days. And then the next step will be to mow this, scalp it down way down to the ground. And then I can start preparing to plant my plug. So with that, as always, thanks for watching. I'm Alan Hayne, the Lawn Care Nut, and I'll see you in the lawn.